what she does and I love our collaboration and she is my producer and it started a whole new program line here. So I want to thank her for being up early this morning and giving me the opportunity to join all of you and to bring something of me to you that is a more familiar avenue of expressing my spirituality, my humanness, and what it means to be a person of this work, what it means to be a person working with people that seek this work as a way to feel who you are, to explore who you are, to develop who you are, and to have someone be with you as you are becoming who you are. And so this is one of those opportunities. It's just a half hour show and it's amazing what can be packed into a half hour show. So if you like this show, please go and press like, subscribe, be a part of the program in a way that brings you into your world. Use it, develop with it and interact with it. If you would like to work with me personally, you can find my site at soulawakenings.org and to explore the different things that I do and the different things that I have to offer. You can also interact with all the things that Denise and I are doing by going to the Temple Within and seeing what is there because there's a menu of choice for spiritual development and human expression that is quite sophisticated and it's because of you that we are developing to become who we are. Because you're the inspiration. You're the reason why we are, in all due respect, brought to the forefront because we're asked to be to the forefront. Not just from you, the humanness, but from our souls, from that spiritual collectiveness that's behind us, around us. Makes me a bit emotional. So why am I really here? Why I'm really here is because there's a place inside me that has been anointed, ordained, given the gift and the responsibility of being someone of sight, insight, and the ability to see in a way that I am tenderly awed by, moved by, overwhelmed by at times. When the sight shows something that needs translation and description, of what it is that people bring to those waves, to those vibrations, to the octaves, the frequencies, all the words that if anybody who's ever been listening to me hears me say, but the shimmer, the shimmer of your life with your spiritual beings. What I am about with coffee, tea, and me, and let's just acknowledge my drug. <laughs> this is my drug of choice. Good morning, everybody. I'm coffee, and I do waver between coffee and tea. I used to have a, call, a show called Wine at Nine, so you can understand what that was about. <laughs> There's that place where in this half hour, I want to be able to devote first and foremost a prayer, an acknowledgement for intention. And this intention is that you are able to connect with a deeper, sweeter, softer, gentler truth with inside yourself. That I know for a fact, everybody reaches out and we all need to reach in. And what that means is when you reach out to us, we, I, reach in to that place of my soul that has been granted the responsibility to enhance my own relationship with spirit so that as I, in collaboration with spirit, collaborate with your spirits that are collaborating with you. And the intention for all this is that we have a group conference. We have a group visual. We have a group experience that the empathicness of spirit is then allowed to be a conduit that brings to all of us that quiver, those goosebumps, that tear, that gift of saying, I am touched. I'm not alone. All of us, all of us reach out. I am in that place in my life where it really doesn't matter specifically who you reach out to 
in the guidelines of love and light and self-respect. And to know that there are so many venues, so many aspects of what is holy, what is sacred, what is godly, what is the goddess, what is the nature of life, what is the nature in life, and what is the nature of your life as you participate in it. I am going to dedicate my first show to my beloved sister-in-law, Susie Herrick, and her beloved, Freddie D'Amato. I just spent the weekend there where divine light and energy brought me to the honesty of life, not just the hopes and prayers of it, not just the I wishes of it, but the honesty of life where someone is fighting for their life with their life and the way the life they're choosing is bringing them the choices because Freddie is fighting the best fight I have ever seen with dealing with cancer. And there's that place of when, how do we see our prayers answered if they're not answered the way we want them to be? Which I know for a fact everybody wants. I want a cure. I want this over. I want it the way that we want. We had it before. Where's my love? What have I done wrong? And I want to be able to bring to you all the gift that I was given by being in their presence this weekend. Not all of us like to see life be challenged to its last moment. Not all of us can tolerate when a life is devoured or celebrated because someone chooses to fight to the very end so that there is no end. There's just a continuation. And I say that with the deepest respect. Freddie, I wanna say to you that I am in such agreement with trusting your choices to have everybody around you be a part of this experience of the way you are living and the way that you are orchestrating your own breathing, the way that your breath with spirit is giving you inhale and exhale. You also are saying to us all, Freddie, there is no death unless we tolerate something to say, this is it, it's over, there is no more. And what I experience with Freddie and Susan is them standing down the very doctors that say, well, um, well, you all know if anybody's fought anything with anything that says, you know, you have to surrender, you have to give up, it's over, you've done your best. I am so impressed with her as his adversary, her as his voice now saying, do not bring death into the room. Bring life in, bring choice in, bring the battle of that inspiration so that he knows he is still alive for every second he is living and that that life transcends into the lines that we can't see. I am riveted with energy right now. This to me is where faith comes in. This to me is where love comes in. This to me is when someone says, nobody knows me and I know myself enough that I ask you to love me as I know who I am even more by fighting everybody and saying, don't give me your decision to live. I am giving you my decision. Will you choose to live with me? This, everybody, to me, is true love because it means you're not going to be what I want you to be. You're not going to make my life nicer. It means I am with you in the sacredness of where I really am fighting with every breath to be the purest I can be in my rage and my confusion, my decision in my love and all this Freddie has not lost that sight of love. He has not lost sight that he's being loved. So many of us talk about karma 
And we talk about karma in that way that, you know, what did I do? What did I do? Oh my God, my life is so hard. You know, where did I screw up? And I am not talking just about anybody out there. I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about the dignity and the responsibility of taking a look of when we are in the dark night of the soul. It is there to bring the light into the darkness, not necessarily have the darkness be excluded, but illuminated so that the shadows can be seen so that we're not alone and so lost in the dark that there's no flicker of light. And this is what life is. Why does anybody think all these inspirational, inspirational readings that are given to us, the codes of conduct, the hopes of inspiration and achievement, and to stay connected no matter how deep the conflict or how elated the joy. These inspirational beings that come in are here because our humanness does not want to be alone or detached from what it is that we know is out there, but we don't always experience when we're suffering from something that is called, why me? Why me? So in the beauty and in the elegance of my love, Susie, saying, why? What did I do? I will all tell you exactly what happened within time. A hand reached through these clouds with a silver small dish, like from the most elegance of homes of the 1800s, where someone of great service and dignity offers you a plate and there was a white envelope on it. And when I saw this hand coming to me, it was, um, Oh, this is great. What was, you know, a hand delivered message to me. Um, and then I have to stop because we do edit these things. And of course, I want Susie to hear what it is that she wants to hear. And yet I can't bear to patronize her or condescend to her. It has to be what is being hand delivered to me. And to pick up that envelope and open it and to know that there is a relief in the release of Susie. It's not what you did in the negative. It's the promise you made to stay with your love until the end, no matter what. What you did is promise love. And spirit came in because her cry needed to hear Oh my God, I am here because I'm loving him. I won't abandon him. I won't let anybody take our love away, even me, in being so overwhelmed with the intensity of the love, keeping the commitment to stay together during life while it is offered in the way life is being offered, not necessarily in the life that conveniences us. Spirit has never said, pray to me so I can convenience your life. And that is a slippery slide, everybody, because the new age has really kind of gone down that highway of, I just can't experience what it is I'm experiencing, so will you give me the relief and just eliminate what it is that I have to endure or navigate to develop the character of who I am. To be in the awareness of, you know, the benefit of life is that you have a benefit to be alive. And then what do you do? How do you bring the beauty of your life through every moment without forfeiting the love? And that means that I will be very personal here. When I'm angry, there's no doubt about it. Nobody has missed out on the fact when I'm angry. When I'm scared, nobody has missed out on the reality that I can say, I'm scared. And I can be angry that I'm scared. And when I'm depressed, I'm in that place of, I'm in that place needing to feel the face that I am no longer seeing look at me. And it's the reflection of me calling me into my future. Come, follow me. I am you, you are me. We need to move forward. 
So all these beautiful ideology, no, I'm going to get, my tongue hasn't got enough coffee yet. All these images that we are looking for into the images of the, the Magi, into the Gospels, into the words that are written in the holy books. All these images are the reflection of our self in the many guises of the apparitions that we would be comforted by when we see them. And they reflect to us the love we need so that we can remember that we have love, we are love, and the only reason why I'd be suffering if I am with someone is because I love them. And I want that love to stay quickened wherever. We wait for a child to be born. There's no guarantee it will be born. I've had that experience. We wait for a child to grow up. There's no guarantee they will grow up. We've waited for those experiences. We wait for our lives to be more than we expect. We wait our dreams come true. There is so much possibility. I would say hope, but I want to bring it to possibility. Because the hope is, I hope it works out. The hope is, I hope I see what it is. The possibility is, what do I do when I see it? When it's brought to me. Do it, if it's a conveyor belt, belt, uh, belt that comes down the road and says, well, here are some of your options, and none of them are anything that I like. What is it if it's the one that pauses with me and gives me the respect of saying, Sandy, this is the one that you chose from another life, or this is the one that you and spirit are engaged in, and this is the one that will develop who you are into more magnificence for what it is that you are thinking you like or know that you like and eventually will liken yourself to be. So the hurdle is not immediate. The, the, the passage is not always broad. And the ability to speak at a level of transformative energy is only offered when you are a conduit of that energy inside yourself that has transformed something and can transform something and then support transformation and inspire transformation and collude, if there's any collusion, let's collude with the elegance of what spirit is bringing rather than the suspicion that spirit is not involved with us at all. So this is about keeping our hearts open. This show is about touching the heart in a way that our experiences are not devaluized, they're not made wrong because you're having them if you're struggling. They're not made better because you're in a moment of a highlight. Oh boy, you figured out the key of life. Aren't you lucky? How did you do it? This is about the communion of what it is to be a human being in a sacred walk at all times. Whether you believe or don't, you are a human being walking through this life, having many adventures that when you are in need, you ask something to pay attention. So if we take the myth away about that something has only got to be the way I believe, then that means we can all start being one with, well, we all want to believe and have that hope of transformation spark us into the right to be a part of everything. So in this journey with my sister-in-law, Susie Herrick, and the beloved Freddie D'Amato, I inhaled this weekend the spirit. I went down there to go to New York to go to a film festival of a film called The Breast Archives that I am in. And God bless Megan Murphy for doing a project for women and men to hear about what our breasts are. Not what you want them to be, what they are to us. The dignity of being a woman with breasts. The dignity of revealing our womanhood. The dignity of being a part of that essence that creates life and joins with mankind in sharing life. And I was going to go to New York, but when I sat on that sofa and looked at her, it was like, 
you know, I think I got down here because I was not going to go down in the first place because Freddie was so traumatized in the hospital on Friday. Oh, no, 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 no. And I'm going to be brutally honest. He needs to rest. He should be quiet. I don't want to interfere when my humanness said, I don't know if I want to see it. I don't know if I can go and touch it. Maybe I should take a step back. And that place of my spiritual guidance, my spiritual sword, my spiritual truth came in and rattled my cage and said, Sandy, get dressed, get in the car and get down there. And within moments I was packed and left because it was that spirit of saying, do not back down from where life is asking you to find your own passage, Sandy. We don't know what this is about other than love. Go face with love, love. And so going into that house and being there, it was like, okay, I'm here, I'm, here it is, all right. And then to see Freddie, and I'm gonna tell you, this was the absolute thing. I went upstairs, he's in bed, he's kind of huddled in there. And he looked just like Charlton Heston, Moses, 1950-something. I mean, he had Moses' hair standing up because he was struck with lightning. He had a beard because he had been on the mountain long enough where, you don't, you know, holy man doesn't shave. I don't know if you notice this. And I looked at him, and his eyes were bright, and they had a shine of them, of light, even though there he was, nested in a bed, fighting with life for life. And I went, you know, for a sick guy, you kind of looked kind of wild and sexy and so alive. And, you know, his face is struggling with uh, the tumor's energy. And he just kind of, and I thought, and he has a sense of humor. He has that, but he did, he looked like Moses. I said, honey, if there's some uh, rocks in here, (laughs) I want to read what they're saying now. And so those rocks that we carry that are heavy in our sacks, when we pull them out, they are the tablets. They are the words of inspiration. They are the guidelines for that place of being truthful to your doctrine. To show that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter on some some level what I don't want to see. What mattered was what I saw And I would have missed out of seeing if that bigger place inside me didn't get up and say, pack your bags and you're going. It was not me deciding. It was me being respectful. I would say obedient because I was. But even more so, (laughs) Dana's laughing at me, sipping her coffee. I was respectful to I can't give up for Freddie. I can't stop loving Freddie. I can't hold back my love now. I'm not asking anybody else to do that. I'm expressing what happens in my truth when the banner is up and it is flying and the call is made. It is not Batman that I turn into or Superwoman. It is that sense of me that says I am born to be a part of of life through all the experiences and I'm qualified whether I know it or not. It is that ministry, it is my ministry. And even though I don't always understand it, it understands me. And so I want you all to know in this half hour that, I have to check the time, I know it goes by fast, yep, five minutes. Your life is your ministry. Your life is a ministry because you administer your ideas. You administer words to people that listen. You administer emotions to people that want to feel or decide not to feel. And for me to go down and sit on that sofa and finally look at Susie and go, would you like me to stay here instead of go to New York? No, 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 you go to New York. And all of a sudden this energy came in me. And it was a familiar energy because it's the same energy I asked my father when he was in the hospital. Would you like me to come from Santa Fe to Norwalk? Oh, no, 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 Sandy. So I gave them an opportunity to reject my offer. But then there's that character inside me. 
I'm staying. <laughs> because it's my choice. Not necessarily their decision because how beautiful they don't want me to be there if, if I don't want to be there. But the beauty is, no, I'm signed up. I'm here. And if I had gone on to New York, I would have had a very different experience. It would have been very lovely. I would have been on a red carpet with the backdrop of all. I would have, you know, had my light beam, and, which would have been lovely and a part of my own dream. Staying with Susie and staying with Freddie, who ended up going back into the hospital, burst the dream into a second-by-second second experience of life that said, we can't forget that there is life and breath beyond everything that we have been dreaming it's all about. It's bigger than the dream. It's more magnificent than the dream. And to be in that kind of love suspends us from our vanity. It suspends us from our need to make everything right so I don't have to feel. It brings us right into everything that we are feeling. And what I'm saying to you by all this, and I bring you to the, to the altar of that task, to find out where you're big. To find out how big you really are, where you don't know your bigness. To find out who do you go to for counsel, and who do you counsel when someone calls you. To know that you are qualified to be present in a moment, because life is only a moment. <coughs> to be 70 years old, and just look back at my life and see it's taken me 70 years to get here, but it takes me a flash and a holy second to see everything that I've come through. And other people have memories of my life that remember me where I may have forgotten me. So all these beings, all these spirits have memories of our soul. I am quivering with goose that remember me in places that I may not remember myself from past lives, even future lives. And what I know for a fact today, I will never, ever, ever forget Susie Herrick and Freddie D'Amato from where I have known them, where I am with them, and when I see them again. Because it's exactly the way it was when I first met him. I saw his eyes and went, dang, I know you. And it was that love of first sight that already engaged the promise of whatever this is, it's already forever. It's already forever. And then we find out what forever is. And in the beauty of being alive, I simply want to say, it's always a surprise. It's always got an option to bring gratitude. The love that we have and the fierceness we have is only developed and experienced when we're present in the activity of being alive with it. I don't want to be too philosoph uh, philosophical, but I want to be human in the philosophy of life. So I know we've got a few minutes left, or a minute left. That went fast. Okay, so this is it. Uh, find me at Soul Awakenings, S O U L A W A K E N I N G S dot org. I will be here once a month for the moment, 9 30 on the second Tuesday of, is it the second Tuesday? Whatever it is. Yeah, the second Tuesday of the month, right before uh, Dana comes on. And I am glad to be back. I'm, I'm glad that Spirit wants me to continue to talk. I'm glad that Spirit still talks through me. Um, and there's our show. <laughs> Welcome to Coffee, Tea, and Me. And uh, like the page. Give me criticism. Give me some feedback. You can write me at sandraherrick at me.com. And I look forward to more. Thank you for listening. And thank you for bringing my heart to yours. Have a great day. Spectacular. That was really good, <laughs> Sand. That was really good. Thank you. Wait.
goes fast. <laughs>